This channel is for educational purposes only. Uh, make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investments. Um, and there is inherent risk in trading. So it's speculative. Uh, just make sure you keep that in mind. Hi, this is Joe Rabel. We're going to do an update on the uh, S&P and the QQQ. We're going to go through all four time frames uh, and just take a quick peek at the price uh, trend and momentum conditions for those. I uh, also want to talk about the market conditions, but I want to spend a few minutes discussing volatility. Uh, I'm going to give you a slightly different look at volatility, and uh, I think it's important to recognize how uh, it can be a, a, a helpful tool at telling us when something a little bit more significant might be coming uh, in terms of a correction or a sell-off. So uh, let's go ahead and get into these conditions. And um, just starting on the left, just so you know, the sentiment numbers did drop uh, from 47% more bulls than bears down to 43% more bulls than bears. So a little bit of a drop. We're still in the 40s. It's still kind of in uh, what I would consider to be a you know, cautious zone. Um, but the fact that it dropped without the market really dropping is probably a good sign that this could continue to kind of push higher. Also, overbought, oversold. Um, we got up to 85. So uh, look at this weekly five RSI. And you can see we're up into this range where we're getting into, you know, a little bit more into, uh, you know, la la land a little bit up into uh, overbought territory that is definitely a little bit more, um, at least, uh, I think, dangerous in terms of looking for a short term pullback. It's something I th we have to continue to be on the watch for. Um, I'm going to go into the trend and momentum in a second, but let's take a look at the volatility. The daily chart has not changed at all. I want you to look at this weekly. Uh, so this is a weekly version of the ATR. So uh, it's a 20 period weekly average true range. That's the red line here. OK, and uh, I've got a uh, 20 period um, moving average. Actually, I think it's at 18 just to be sure I'm telling you the right thing. 18. I uh, always get that mixed up, but 18 is the blue line. So that's a, a moving average of the average true range. So when that line is declining, it's basically telling you kind of like the trend of volatility is declining. And so um, what I did was I put this vertical line in place in the three spots where I think we went through, uh, you know, an extended period where the red line stayed below its moving average for an extended period of time and then finally broke out. And price actually went through an extended run, uh, usually at the end of the move. So if we kind of, if we look at this period here, um, you know, it's like, it's sort of like an extended move. And then you can see here, that was somewhat of an extended move. Um, we did have a crossover here, but, um, if you notice, we don't really have the same, it's, it's more choppy in here. We don't really have that same extended move. I would say this definitely qualifies as somewhat of an, an extended move. The difference is in all three of these cases, right here, right here, and here, I'm showing where the average terrain crossed up through its moving average. So there was a period where the, the average terrain was on the weekly was actually rising for a period of time before it even crossed the moving average. And um, then when it crossed the moving average is where I've drawn this line in. So the last two times it was basically co coincidental with the top, meaning it was basically right at the same time the price was topping, this was crossing its moving average. This time back here was a little bit better signal. You got a little bit earlier warning sign that something was, that the momentum, or I should say the average true range or the volatility was increasing prior to the market really starting to decline. So I kind of view that as a better signal just because it's given you a little bit earlier of a warning sign. But the fact of the matter is these were, uh, all three of these I think were pretty good signals. And um, look at the difference right now. We're, we're making lower lows and lower highs. We're below this moving average. And this is going to a new low for the move. We don't have any sign of a push up or anything like that. And we haven't certainly haven't crossed the 18 MA on this weekly. So I, I'm bringing this up and, and it's an add on to what I was talking about last week, where I think we need to see an increase in volatility and not, you know, not making a lot of upside progress necessarily 
Um, we might keep progressing higher, but we're going to see some form of increase in volatility, or at least it's a very high probability that we're going to see some form of higher uh, volatility before the market really has any kind of a down move uh, of significance. So uh, I just wanted to bring this up. I thought it was a useful tool. It's something you can put every single software out there has average to range. So just looking at this in different ways and seeing these extended moves where right now it's just a, it's in a really strong condition and the volatility is low. Um, not really a point in time where I would be expecting a, uh, a really quick and hard, fast down move. Um, so we're going to have to see some more volatility, I think, uh, come into play. Um, let's go ahead and get straight into the time frames. Um, you know, if we look at the monthly chart, it's just getting farther and further away from this 18 MA. And this is starting to turn into a pretty big month. Uh, we've got, what, a day or two left of the month. Uh, so not a lot of time. I mean, actually, tomorrow will be uh, uh, Friday will be the uh, the last day of the month. And we'll just have to see. I mean, you're closing at the high after a big bar. Again, I would be looking for May to have some kind of a retracement at a minimum uh, because we've gotten stretched away from this line. Remember we had we did the uh, video on when you get too far away from the 4MA, you'd expect maybe a little follow through and then it should start to retrace. We're getting a little bit too far away. So I think the increase in the short term, uh, and that agrees with the overbought oversold uh, indicator, the RSI, that we probably ought to have some kind of a, uh, of a uh, retracement or pullback. Um, the weekly looks okay. Uh, again, you know, the condition in place where the 18 is above the 40, both lines are rising at about the same rate, is still in place here. The only problem I have with this is if you notice, price is about the same distance away from the 18 as the 18 is away from the 40. I mean, they're, they're, it's not like it's close. The, the lower risk areas are when you're closer to the 18. And right now we're getting a little stretched away in the short term. It would be really healthy if we saw a pullback down closer to 4,000 and met up with the 18-week, the I think. Um, daily chart has very good momentum characteristics now. After all this time where it really couldn't get a cohesive move in place, it was a lot of choppy action. Now, finally, we're showing uh, a little bit more strength. You know, how long is that going to last? I'm not, I'm not, I really don't know, but I think we'll see, probably see some kind of a divergence develop in the DIs or something like that. But as long as red DI is below 15, you can assume the sellers are pretty weak. Um, so again, we're, we've got price above a rising uh, 18, which is also above a rising 40. So this trend is up. MACD has not confirmed here, but um, I, I would tell you in this situation, the ADX does look uh, pretty promising uh, right now. Um, now on the uh, hourly chart, we're, uh, we're overall, we're okay. I mean, the 18 is above the 40 and they are rising, but there's not a lot of upside progress here. Uh, the trend is positive from that standpoint, but we don't have much in the way of momentum. Um, you know, if you look at some of the earnings that came out here, and actually let me switch over to the QQQ because uh, that's where a lot of the earnings are coming from. And uh, we're not seeing a huge amount of upside progress. Some of them are. I mean, some like Facebook had, had good days, but uh, we're seeing some stocks come out with pretty good news and, and the stocks aren't really reacting in a favorable way. So it's something we have to watch, I think, pretty closely, especially because these are big leaders that have a huge impact. They're the heavyweights. They are the most heavily weighted stocks in the marketplace and how they react is going to have, uh, have an impact. Um, so anyway, this is also getting stretched away on a monthly chart. Uh, the momentum conditions on the monthly, like I've been saying, are, are better than they are on the S&P. Uh, but when you go down to the smaller time frames, that changes a little bit. Uh, the QQQ has bounced off the 18 week and it's rallied up to this hold high, but it's more, it's, it's not really breaking out here. I would still expect or potentially, uh, uh, like to see a little bit more consolidation, uh, in this QQQ between 340 and 320, 325, something like that. A little bit more consolidation in the short term. We definitely don't have 
Uh, MACD has crossed over the signal line, but it hasn't really met up with the old high. It's nowhere near uh, matching the momentum of price. And uh, ADX is way down at 25, even though the price is all the way back to the high. So um, it's going to take a little bit of time to see these confirm if they are going to confirm. And it would just make sense to me to see this maybe consolidate a little bit more in the short term. Uh, daily chart um, doesn't have really any, I mean, compared to uh, what's going on in the S&P, I don't think this has very good momentum characteristics. And again, with low ADX here, despite the fact that we've made it back up to the old high, it would just make sense for this to spend a little bit more time consolidating. I'm not necessarily calling for a big reversal to the downside because we just don't see the selling volume and we don't see any sellers really uh, in the DI or anything like that. But um, I, I, again, I think the healthy thing would be to do a little bit more consolidating just based on how extended it is. Uh, no real change in the hourly. It's just really going sideways. No momentum in place. Uh, resistance up in the three low three, 340s. Support's probably around 335, uh, probably just kind of range bound in the near term. Now, what's happening is we've got this low ADX pattern in place, and you could really draw in a, uh, a box here like this, and we've got sort of a rectangular formation developing with low ADX. So now we'd be looking for either a breakout or a breakdown to sort of signify the next move in this trend. And uh, that'll probably be something you're looking for. Just realize you don't want to buy breakouts that are early morning gap ups that end up failing. You know, you want the hourly bar to close above the breakout or breakdown area. Um, so that's kind of what I would be watching. And this is basically the range I'd be looking at for this. Um, so uh, that's the update for the week. Uh, post any questions or comments you have. We'll uh, see you next time. <music>